that's a mood enhancer. So dance, you can dance like a sound dancer. What's the move? Tell me what's your move. Beast day, dance floor, hit your move. Hey, ain't no way. Ain't no, ain't no way. Hit your move, yeah, you can't run away. Nah, what's the move? Tell me what's your move. What's your move? Beast day, dance floor, hit your move. Hey, ain't no way. Ain't no, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Hit your move, yeah, you can't run away. Nah, what's the move? Tell me what's your move. Beast day, dance floor, hit your move. Hey, ain't no way. Moves is the lava approved, but that stink face will get you approved and removed. Uh, now it's brothers versus sisters on the floor. Let's get it started. We gon' keep it clean, don't go left like you departed. In the to double you regardless. The victory is mapped out, it's plotted, it's charted. But you know it's harmless. You know, this fun and games is a feast day. So I signal DJ, play upon the replay. Gonna be a long night predicted like a suit say. Cut it up, run it up like I'm you say. Stop. Like we said, it's a feast day. Never complain. Popping Manny Chevy's champagne. IUIC campaign. Blowing up like who's say? Tell me what's your move. Feast day, dance floor. Hit your move. Hey, ain't no way. Ain't no, ain't no way. Hit your move. Yeah, you can't run away. Nah, what's the move? Tell me what's your move. What's your move? Feast day, dance floor. Hit your move. Hey, ain't no way. Ain't no, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Hit your move. Yeah, you can't run away. Nah, what's the move? Tell me what's your move. What's your move? Stay, dance floor, hit your move, hey. Ain't no way, ain't no way, no way, ain't no way. Hit your move, yeah, you can't run away, nah. Dancing like David, killing Philistines. If you see this dance, it's a jiff for me. What are those? Roll your fingers on the cars. I rock many colors, purple gold. Tell me what's the move, tell me what's the move. Try and break the jewels, and we rolling tools. We gon' bring the groove when we coming through. Sipping on the jewels with the food in the other room. Dancing to the muse, we bringing the vibe, yeah. If you in the jewel, then you hitting outside, yeah. Cup in my hand with the Bible on the side, yeah. Bring to the kingdom of the land in my eyes, yeah. We the troops, Chevy is sliding the sky, they confuse. We gon' hold a line, sisters looking fine. Light shine glowing at the right time. Feast day, party hard when it's nighttime. TJ hit the song at the right time. We gon' bring the groove, time to bust a move. Everybody make room, dance floor coming through. What's your move? Feast day, dance floor, hit your move, hey. Ain't no way, ain't no, ain't no way. Hit your move, yeah, you can't run away. Nah, what's the move? Tell me, what's your move? What's your move? Feast day, dance floor, hit your move, hey. Ain't no way, ain't no, ain't no way, ain't no way. Hit your move, yeah, you can't run away. Nah, what's the move? Tell me, what's your move? What's your move? Feast day, dance floor, hit your move, hey. Mic check. Hey, shalom. Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, grab your, grab your seat. Grab your seat. Class is, class is starting. Brothers and sisters, grab your seat. Grab your seat.
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look. Hop on the boat. Water we float. Are we feeding this near? No time to choke. No time to get smoked. Say they want smoke. Want what? For the end. So murder he wrote. He wrote. Hop on the boat. Water we float. Are we feeding this near? No time to choke. No time to get smoked. Say they want smoke. Want what? For the end. Murder he wrote. He murder he wrote. Bring heat like a coke. Your sin is a bubble. Get biblically poked. Clean it in soap. Bible I quote. Music for God. They asking for more. You carry a gun. The Bible I tote. Laws I devote. Breaking the yoke. Jesus was black, so I'm walking a fro. Cut heathens like grass so the bible gon' mow my brothers we glow watching us grow learn from a babe turn to a pro when i say whoa not talking about whoa talking destruction from top to below i see my bro don't say hello i say shalom then we on go demons attempt telling them no devilish land coated in snow Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we come before you today, Lord, on the Sabbath day, asking for your forgiveness of sins, Lord, asking for you to heal the brothers and sisters of the sick, Lord. Asking for you to protect us from those that seek to do us harm, Lord. Ask for you, asking for you to, to also protect us from all the crazy stuff that's going on here in Babylon the Great, Lord. Put that shield over us. Put thy, thy holy angel to, to um, protect us, Lord, from the violence, from the civil unrest, from the coronavirus and all these evil things, that these plagues that you say you're going to bring upon the earth. Protect us, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. The brother and the sisters that is sick, that is weak in spirit, strengthen them, Lord. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, hand salute. Salute down, face sisters. To all the daughters and mothers of Sarah, we say shalom. All right, shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. Most sign Christ bless. You know, I hope you brothers and sisters having a blessed Sabbath out there. You know, um, I hope you all enduring. I hope you all staying strong in the faith. I hope you, you all see what's been going on throughout, throughout the week, throughout the weeks, throughout the month, throughout the whole 2020, man. You know, this world is coming to an end. Understand that. You know, those of you brothers that that's weak ancestors, that's weak in faith. This is, this is not the time to be faint-hearted, man. This is not the time to be wavering. This is not the time to be caught up in, in fornication and all of these evil, evil things, man. You understand? So, hey, what I'm going to do today, today I'm going um, to go over 
the, the history of John the Baptist. All right? I'm going to touch on that today. Now, Bishop went over this for me like 10 years ago, you know, so, you know, it just came, you know, you know, when you just, you start sitting on and thinking about certain things, is it? I say, you know what, let me go over it with you all today, you know? Yeah, um, I'm going to get a marriage class. I rest for like another week or so. <laughs> today, is, today, Deacon Lab was supposed to be holding it down, but you know, yeah. I'm going to be holding it down for him. So the class, the topic today is the history of John the Baptist. All right? So let's go into the history. I want you to go to, go to, to Luke, go to Luke 1. Go from verse 1? No, 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 not Luke 1. Hold on, eh? Hold on. Hold on. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah, start at verse five. Luke one and one one on uh, verse five. Five. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of, of the course of Abiah, and his wife was the daughter of Aaron. So this priest, this is John the Baptist's father that we are speaking about here. He says he was of the what? Read it again. Read it slowly. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. Of the course of Abiah. So John the Baptist's father, he was of the course of Abiah. Remember what, what, I, what, I, what, um, what, that, what I just said, the course of Abiah. Read on. And his wife was the daughter of Aaron, was of the daughters of Aaron. So his wife was a Levite. Okay, read on. And he was a Levite. Okay, read on. And, and her name was Elizabeth. And they, and they were both righteous before God. So they were both righteous brothers and sisters. Read on. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. So, and this brother and this sister, they were blameless. You know, they were blameless. They had a good conscience before the Most High God. Okay, read on. And they had no child. Because that Elizabeth was barren. So Elizabeth was barren. Okay? Meaning she couldn't have kids. You know what's so heavy? What's so heavy about that right there is because some of you sisters, you all come to the truth. And you all know that you all Israel. And, and some of you all been trying to get pregnant for years. Been trying to have kids. You know, and you all... And, and you all um, and you all, you all be depressed because a lot of you all cannot get pregnant. You know, but when you go back to the scripture, it tells you that this sister Elizabeth, she was righteous. She was righteous before God. You know, and she wasn't getting pregnant. You know, so that's showing you sometimes, even though sometimes bad things might be happening to you. You know, understand that the Mosai is in charge over everything, man. You know, so keep on reading. So that's for you sisters that been trying to get pregnant, you brothers and sisters that trying to have kids and it's hard. You know, know that the most I could make anything happen. Keep on reading. And they both were now well stricken in years. And not just, not just they couldn't have kids. They probably was like 60, 70 years old. They were up there in age. You know, we know she already passed the age of menopause. That's what it's called. Menopause. Right? Yeah, menopause. She don't she she don't pass menopause already. Okay, read on. Verse 8. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. So this is the order of his course. Remember, it says he's from the course of Abiah. Okay, read on. According to the custom. Of the priest's office. According to the custom of the priest's office. Read on. 
His lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. So that's the course of a buyer. All right. The course of a buyer was to burn incense. That was Zechariah lot. And that did supposed to be John the Baptist lot. That was their, that was the lot for his family. Okay. Now I want you to go to 1 Chronicles 23 and 24. So their lot was John the Baptist's father, his lot as a Levite priest. His family lot was to go to the temple and burn incense. All right? Burn incense unto the Lord. Okay? That's like what you see Reuben doing right there right now. <laughs> From the tribe of Levi. That was his lot. So read that for me. The book of First Chronicles chapter 23 verse 24. These were the sons of Levi after the house of their fathers. Read, even, on, read on. Even the chief of the fathers, as they were counted by number of names by their poles. So they were counted. So this is when you read the whole chapter, I told you that the tribe of Levi was separated and each Levi family was given an office. You know, whether one office will be to do sacrifice, another office going to be to burn incense, another office might be to clean the temple. To clean and sweep and make sure the temple is clean. You know, each Levite's, each Levite family was given an office. Okay? And John the Baptist, his family office was to burn incense. Okay? That's the course of Obiah. Read on. That did the work for the service of the house of the Lord from the age of 20 years and upward. So it says, you know what, read that again. I just, I, I want to bring something else out it, from that too. Even the chief of the fathers, as they were counted by the number of their names by their poles, that did the work for the service of the house of the Lord. That did the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Read on. From the age of 20 years and From upward. the age of what? Of 20 years. From the age of what? 20 years. Read on. And upward. So why it says 20 years and up, upward? You could start doing the work of the Lord. Because some of you brothers, we tell you all, you all can't come to camp. You know, we tell you, you can't go, you can't go to camp until you meet the age of 20. Because we just read in here, it show you what's the age you could do the work of the Lord. Age 20. Why does it says that? Because go to, um, go to Numbers. Numbers 1 and what? 18. 18. Yeah, Numbers 1 and 18. Get that and read it. So this is why it says from 20 years and up, the Levites could have started doing, the Levite men could have started doing the work of the Lord. So when you're 20 years old, brothers, guess what? You can start going on the street and teaching. Because at 20 years old, you're supposed to have the understanding of a man. You must be able to discern at 20 from what's right and what's wrong, you, you know? At 20 years old, you should have the understanding of a man. You're no longer a kid. You're no longer a teenager. You know, now you are, um, you are a young man at the age of 20. Same thing that applies for the men is the same thing we apply for the sisters. We tell you when you meet the age of 20, you are, you are a woman. You understand? Because at that age, you know, you're no longer a little girl. You're not a teenager. At the age of 20, you as a sister, you, able, you should be able to make certain decisions. You know? Read that for me. The book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. Read, read on. What, what, which part did talk for war there? Mention war. Verse, verse 20. And the children of Reuben. So, so it says from 20 years old. You understand? From 20 years old. Read on. Verse 20. And the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, by their poles, every male from 20 years old and upward. All that were able to go forth to war. So 20 years old and upwards, that's when you are able to make certain decisions as a man. You know, you should not. A lot of you brothers, you're all 20 years old. You're all 20 years old and you're still living in your mother house. 
you still ain't you and you have not learned to be a man you you still irresponsible you know what i mean that's from the time you meet 20 you in your mind you're supposed to be like okay I, you know what? i gotta get out of mom and dad crib you know even though you move and you you rent in a room with a brother and so forth but it teach you responsibility you know you should not be 20 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 and you <laughs> you know and you you um still you st in mommy house you know at in my in my teenager me and wife when me and wife was teenagers we move in together you know what i mean you know so so my point is this when you're 20 years old, you should not be living in your mother's house, man. When you're 20 years old, that's the time the scripture says, you know, when you're 20 years old, you could go to war. Meaning what? At that age, you could kill somebody. You could take somebody's life. You understand right and wrong. You know, you understand right and wrong. That's why I said from 20 years old, you're you ready to go to war. Okay? So jump back to where you was at. Well, Chronicles will go back to Luke. Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 23. Verse 24. So why did I go here? I go here to show you all the order of Obiah. The order of Obiah. You know, show you all the priests and them. They, the Lord had set them up and gave them different offices. Read on. Verse 24. These were the sons of Levi after the house of their fathers, even the chief of the, of the fathers, as they were counted by the number of, of names by their poles that did the work of, for the service of the house of the Lord from the age of 20 years and upward. So they did the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Okay, now I want you to go and each one of them had a different service to do in the house of the Lord. Each different family. All right, John the Baptist family was the house of a buyer. You know, you understand? They, that's what they did. They dealt, they dealt with burning the incense in the temple. Now I want you to go to Leviticus 1 and 5. And read that for me. Leviticus chapter 1 verse 5. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest Aaron's sons shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood around about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Is that Leviticus? Is that? Levi no, sorry, sorry. Leviticus 10 and 1. Sorry, Leviticus 10 and 1. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1. Leviticus 10, verse 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put, their, and put therein and put therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. Okay, so this is what I'm showing you here. The priests and them, their job was to, they was commanding of the Lord to burn incense in the temple. There was a family that was, that's all their job was to do, to burn incense in the temple. Okay, there was a family, their job is just to do the animal sacrifice. You know, but right now we're dealing with John the Baptist, his, his um, Zacharias, um, what they supposed to do, what John the Baptist's father supposed to do. You know, their order was the order of Obiah. And the order of Obiah is burning incense in the temple. All right? So that's why I went here. So now I want you to go back to, to Luke. Go back to Luke. Luke chapter 1, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias. Of the course of Abiah. Of the course of Abiah, meaning he burned incense in the temple. Read on. And his wife that, was... That was his job. Ever since he 20 years old, that was his job. Read on. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. And her name was Elizabeth. Read on. And they both... And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child. Because that Elizabeth was barren, and they were both, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot 
was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. So his lot was to burn incense. That was Zechariah's lot, which is John the Baptist's father. His lot was to burn incense in the temple. Okay, read on. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without, without at the time of incense. And so they, the whole, everybody was praying without in the, with, with, in the time of incense. Read on. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. So while he, yo, an angel appeared unto him on the right side of the what? On the right side of the altar of incense. So you had an altar with all the incense burning going up and the people praying and so forth. And an angel appear unto Zechariah, man, while he's there doing his priestly job. Okay, read on. Verse 12. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. So he got, he got afraid. Read on. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Read on. Verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness. And hold on, hold on, hold on. What does John mean? What's John? What John mean? That's your name, right? Yes, sir. Your name is Yan, meaning John. Jehovah has been gracious. God has gracious. been gracious. Okay. God have been gracious. All right. So read on. Verse fourteen. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great. In the sight of the Lord. So it says he shall, John the Baptist shall be what? For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. So he said, John the Baptist shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Read on. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. So he it says he shall neither drink wine or strong drink. Drink. When, when you don't drink wine and strong drink, what, what, what was John the Baptist? You could help me. Who could help me? Well, I will you stand up, say it on the mic. Huh? No, come on, grab my mic. Shalom, leadership. Shalom, shalom. Most of Christ blessed. Um, he was a he was a prophet. He was a um a like a pastor prophet um that baptizes. Yeah, he was a pastor prophet, but what? He was, it was some... Like a fisher of... Fisher, fisher Who can help him? Who can help him? Uh, okay, okay. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Who can help him? Come on, come on. No, 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 no. What? Well, we just read here. We just read some here. He said he didn't drink wine and so forth. What that's going into? Shalom, uh, uh, Deacon. He's a, a Nazarite. He was a Nazarite. John the Baptist was a Nazarite. You all understand that? You know, now what's a Nazarite? I want you to go to... To explain what's a Nazarite, go to number six and start at verse one. So John the Baptist was a Nazarite. Now, can you be a Nazarite today? No. It's going to be very hard. You could take a Nazarite vow. You know, it's going, you know, that's, I don't know. It's going to be very hard. It's going to be very hard to take a Nazarite vow today. Number one, you can't take part in the breaking of the bread and drinking of the wine. You know, and um, number two, you cannot, it's, it's going to be very hard, man. Yeah, everything is defiled in this system, man. Okay, read that for me. The book of Numbers chapter 6 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, when either man or woman shall separate themselves to, the, to vow a vow of a Nazarite. So if you vow a vow of a Nazarite, read on. To separate themselves unto the Lord. When you make a vow of a Nazarite, is you separating yourself unto the Lord. Okay, you saying, I'm giving my life over to the Lord. Okay, and that's what, um, when you read the scripture, that was Samson did. Was it Samson? Yes, yes. Samson did that. You know, you had many brothers and sisters that did that, or it did that in the Bible. You know, that took the not, they took the Nazarite, the Nazarite vow. Okay, you know, they grow where where you grow your hair, you don't cut your hair, you don't cut you do you don't cut your your beard, 
you know, um, you don't drink wine, you know, you say, listen, I'm going, I'm going to, I'm trying to get closer to the most high. That's what basically it is. You know, and, and you give yourself to the most high. You know, that's a vow that our forefathers used to do. Okay, read on. Verse 3. He shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. So you can't drink no wine, no strong drink. You know, no alcohol, no henny, no hennessy. You know, <laughs> no, no, uh, what's, the, what's the one we call? We call it the, the purple prophet's drink. The drink, IUIC officially, oh, official Royal. drink. Crown, Crown Royal. Royal. <laughs> Crown Royal, that's the that's the purple that's the prophet's drink right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, keep keep on reading. And shall drink no vinegar of wine. So we can't drink if you are Nazarite, you can't drink wine. Or vinegar of strong drink. Or you can't drink no alcohol. Read on. Neither shall neither shall No, he... no, hold on, hold on. No, that's the only time you can drink alcohol. You know, but it's not, no, you know, in Christianity, they're saying, it's a sin to drink. Ah, why are you drinking? That's a sin. No, it's a, it's a sin if you're drinking and you get drunk, but there's nothing wrong in drinking alcohol in moderation. You understand? In moderation. You know, I'm talking about you drinking and you getting drunk and you swanky, you get, you drink, you get angry and you go home and put your hands on your wife. None of that. You know, I'm talking about you drinking in moderation because the scripture talk about Wine and strong drink, it was, it was created to make it men's souls merry. Christ's first miracles was, was turning water into wine. Why would he turn water into wine? For the feast. You know what I mean? If he was, if he, uh, if it was wrong. Now, why would the people also call him a wine bibber? If he never used to drink, he used to drink. You know, that's why he said, I'm not going to drink of this until I come back. <laughs> you know? But read that for me. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, Read on. nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation shall he, shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree. Of the what? Of all the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree. Nothing that made from vine tree he can eat. Read on. From the kernels even to the husk. Read on. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head. So you can't even cut your hair. You know, you have to let that hair grow. You know, you got to let the beard grow. You know, read on. Until the days be fulfilled. Until the days be fulfilled. For instance, you take a vow, because when you read Acts, it told you that, that um, um, there were certain men that took a vow, and Paul went with them to... You know, to act like he also took the Nazarite vow to show that the, them that no, he keeping the law. You know, so a Nazarite vow is when you make a vow and you separate yourself unto the Lord. You know, you make a vow and you separate yourself unto the Lord. Read on. In the which he separated, separated himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. So you got to make your hair grow. You can't cut it. You know, where you do that vow for two years? No, John the Baptist was a Nazarite by birth, and he never, he never cut his hair. He never cut his hair. He never drank wine. He never drank strong drink. None of that. Ever since he is young, John the Baptist, okay? He, his whole life, he did the most, his whole life from he born, he was, um, he, what he says, he was given unto the Lord. What did I say, what? He, he shall did. be holy and shall let the lock. No, yeah. he, John the Baptist, he gave his life unto the Lord from a kid, a baby. That's just how he is. That's how he was created. And I'm going to show you, keep, I'm going to show you that. Jump back to Luke. Luke chapter 1, verse 14. Read that again. And and thou shall have great and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Why? Because John the Baptist was a Nazarite. You know? He took the Nazarite vow. Read on. 
And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Read on. Even from his mother's womb. Even while he in his mother's womb. How the hell you could be filled with the Holy Ghost in your mother's womb? How, how, can that, how can that happen? You know, no, let me show you all something. I want you to go to Jeremiah 1 and 5. Jeremiah 1 and 5. So God said, listen, this man, he's going to be full, filled with the Holy Ghost from when he's in his mother's womb. Jeremiah it, chapter 1 verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly... I knew thee. So God said, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Meaning, I knew who you was. I know you. You know, that's heavy right there, right? That's heavy. Imagine you inside your mother womb and the most I said, I know you. You know, I know you. Before you went inside that womb, I know you, man. You know, read on. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, or out of the womb, I sanctify thee. And before you come out of the womb, I sanctify you. Read on. And I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. So God ordained brothers and brothers before they even come on this earth. Before you even come out of the, 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 your mother's womb, the Lord already got a mission planned for you. All you brothers inside, there ain't no coincidence you hear, man. Ain't no coincidence you hear. You know, some of you all your whole life, you just had a longing like you missing something, like something is missing. You know, you're like, damn, is this life? You know, you just feel that emptiness inside. You know, why? Why is that? It's because, guess what? The Most High had a mission established for you ever since you was, he put you in your mother womb. You know, and when you come out, you're like, nah, this can't be life. You're like, damn, it's like I'm missing something. And when you learn the truth, you're like, damn, this is it. This is, this is, this is the emptiness I've been feeling inside. You know, this is what I've been missing. Why? Because God, God, God already ordained you who you're going to be before you even become that person. You know, read on. You want verse 6 you want to jump back to Luke? Yeah, read the, read the whole thing again. Verse 5. Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So Jeremiah was ordained a prophet unto the nations. Okay? He was ordained a prophet unto the nations. The, the, Lord, the, the Lord knew him. The Lord knew him before. Before. He was even born. And, and the same way how... Okay, hold on. The same way how Jeremiah... How Jeremiah was known is the same way how John the Baptist, the most I knew him before he put him in the womb. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Did I go over your head? You know what? Let me... I, I was planning to... Deal with this later on, but I'm going to deal with it now. No. Read that again in Luke. Luke chapter 1, verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall neither drink and shall, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall not drink wine nor strong drink. Read on. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist is going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, the same way Jeremiah was filled with the Holy Spirit. Keep on reading. Even from his mother's womb. Even from his mother's womb. From his mother's womb. womb the most he gonna he gonna be he's gonna be righteous even in the in the womb because why he says that because the most I know who that spirit is the most I know who that spirit is that baby that he called John he said call him John you know that's what the angel told Zechariah give him the name John but that's not his real name the most I know who that spirit is you know that's why it says before I formed thee I knew thee you know keep on reading. Verse 16, 
And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. So it says many of the children of Israel. It says John the Baptist is going to turn them to who? To the Lord. Their, to, shall he turn to the Lord their God. He's going to turn them to the Lord their God. Read on. Verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias. So it says he's going to go. He's going to what? And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. So it says he shall go before him in the spirit and power of who? Elias. Of Elias. Elias day is talking about who? Elijah. That's who it's talking about. Elias there is talking about Elijah. All right? That's why we read in Jeremiah. Remember what Jeremiah said? Before I formed thee, I knew thee. So when John was put in his, in his mother womb, the most I know what spirit he was putting in there. Okay, the Lord know what spirit he was putting in, in, in his, in, in, uh, what's the sister's name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth womb. God know what spirit he was putting in there. You know, read that one more time again. And I'm going to show you all who John the Baptist was in the spirit. Read that for me again. Verse 16. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. It says that he shall go before them in the spirit and power of Elijah. Okay. Why does it say this? I want you to go to Matthew Matthew 17 and start at verse 11. Matthew 17, verse 11. I'm going to show you why the angel said this to Zacharias. Matthew I'm going to show you what the apostles and Christ, that what Christ understood concerning John the Baptist. Read that for me. You want to start from verse 10, D? Yes, yeah, start at verse 10. Verse 10. And his, and his disciples asked him, saying, why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? So the scribes and them, they said Elias must first come. You know, the angels and them telling Zechariah that John the Baptist is going to come in the spirit and power of Elias. Read on. Verse 11. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly first. Shall, Elias truly shall first come. So he says, listen, Christ is speaking to the apostles. Christ is telling the apostles that, listen, Elijah truly first must come. Okay? He first must come. Meaning what he's, let, what he's letting them know here. He said, Elijah first must come. You know, right now, right, that right there he's saying is future tense. After, after his time. You know? Read on. Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. And restore all things. Read on. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. But I'm telling you that what? Elias is come already. So in Christ's time, Christ said, listen, Elias came already. Elijah came already. Okay? But guess what? Elijah, Elijah got to come again. But guess what? He came already. Read on. And they knew him not. And they and nobody knew that he was Elijah. Read on. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. And, and have what? But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. And they did unto him what they wanted. They did him evil. They did him evil. Elijah came back and taught and prophesied. And they did him evil. You know, let me get that scripture where they, what, what, you know, keep on reading. I'm going to jump to that later on. Like, on. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Read on. Verse 13. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Then read that again. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So who is Elijah? Who is John the Baptist? Elijah. So what John the Baptist was Elijah. So now go to Jeremiah 1 and 5 and read it again. John the Baptist was Elijah. 
He wasn't like, oh, he got the spirit of Elijah. No, he was Elijah. Jeremiah 1 and 5 and read it again. That spirit, that man, Elijah, that comes on the earth, that came on the earth, you know, that, that wrote the book of Isaiah, that same dude, that was him, Elijah. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So he says, why is it God saying, I knew thee before I formed thee in the belly? Why is he saying that to Jeremiah? Because guess what? Jeremiah is back again on the earth today. Jeremiah came multiple times when you read the scripture about regeneration. So God knew him the same way how God knew who John the Baptist is. He understood that John the Baptist was who? Elijah. You know, that's why, like, John the Baptist, that's, that's why the scripture says, that he shall be filled from the holy with the Holy Ghost from in the mother womb. Okay? So, John the Baptist, he, he is Elijah in the flesh, walking. You know, and the people know him not, and the people murdered him and killed him. Read that one more time again. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So God knew God knew who John who John. The, the Baptist was, read on. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet. And it's the same thing. John was ordained a prophet. Okay? A prophet to do what? To prepare the way of the Lord. Okay? So from there, go back to where you was at before. You want to go back to um, Matthew 17? Or, uh, yeah, go back to Matthew 17 and read that. Matthew chapter 17, verse 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? So why? Is, okay, read on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come. So he says, Elijah shall truly first come. Read on. And restore all things. And he going to restore all things. Okay, read on. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. But I say unto you, Elias has come already. At that time, it, Elias came, Elias, Elijah, he came as who? As John the Baptist. And he restored all things. What does that mean, he restored all things? He was teaching and preparing for the coming of Christ. Telling brothers and sisters to repent and get themselves right. right. That's what John the Baptist was doing. You know, that's what Elijah was doing when he come as John the Baptist. You know? No. Um... I want you to go to, to Malachi. Go to Malachi 4. 4 and 5? Yeah. The, the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So the Lord says, I'm going to send you Elijah, the prophet. Did he say, I'm going to send you somebody with the spread of Elijah or that that um, act like Elijah? No. The most I say, I'm sending Elijah the prophet before the coming and the dreadful day of the Lord. What is the coming on, what, what is the dreadful day of the Lord that is coming on this earth? The dreadful day of the Lord is, you know what, let me get that in. Is it in Amos? Want him to desire the day of the Lord. Yeah. Get that and read it. So it says that we just read that the Lord going to send us Elijah the prophet before the coming of the dreadful day of the Lord. Read that for me. Amos chapter 5 verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. So woe, the scripture says woe unto you. Mean destruction unto you that desire the day of the Lord. You know a lot of time you hear people say, I can't wait for Christ to return. I can't wait for Christ to come back. Listen, when the prophets saw the visions on them, a Christ returning, they say they don't want to be around in them times. They said, Lord, please let me be sleeping in them times. I don't want to be there. I tell you, they got so afraid when they see the, the destruction and everything that's taking place. But you got brothers and sisters, a lot of time you hear, I can't wait for Christ's return. You know, the scripture says, read it again. 
Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Read on. To what end is it for you? The scripture says, to what end is it, is it for you? Meaning what? Are you dealing right with your brother? Are you doing what's right? Do you carry hatred? Do you carry grudge? Right. Are you evil? You know? Because you saying you want Christ to come back. But a lot of you brothers and sisters ain't right. You know what I mean? That's why that's what preventing the Lord from coming back right now. Because a lot of you all, you all ain't right. You know, a lot of us ain't right. If Christ come back right now, a lot of us is going to die. Because a lot of a lot of a lot of us got things you still working on. You know, you still trying to get this off of you, still trying to get. You know, the scripture says, warn to him that desire the day on the Lord. Because he said, what is, in it, what is in it for you? Are you going to get the kingdom? If Christ come back, are you going to get salvation? Or are you going to die here in Babylon? Are you, are you brothers being evil? Are you sisters being evil? Are you home disrespecting your husband? Calling him out of his name? You're not listening to him? Brothers, are you abusive to your wife? You know, are you carrying hatred towards your brother? Are you always murmuring inside here, speaking evil? Are you doing these things? If you're doing these things, you you better fix it. But you all going to be the same ones talking, I can't wait for Christ to return. I can't wait for Christ to return. You know, but read it again. Woe well, unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Meaning death unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Read on. To what end is it for you? Are you doing what's right? What is the end for you when Christ returns? Read on. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. The day of the Lord is darkness, man. The day of the Lord is darkness. It's destruction. It's World War Three. You know, Deacon Yahushab went over it last night. Within one, one day... One month, one hour is a destruction coming. You know, in one hour, you know, this whole place is going to be destroyed. Read on. As if a man did flee from a lion. So the day of the Lord is like you fleeing from a lion. You know, a lion chasing you, you running from the lion. Read on. And a bear met him. And you run into a bear. You're like, oh man, you turn around. No, you run in the other way. Read on. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall. And, and you and you you went into the house. You got tired, right? You went into the house, right? You went into the house and you lean your hand on the wall. You just lean your hand on the wall. Read on. And a serpent bit him. And you like, ah, oh, so you get bit by a serpent. <laughs> you know, read on. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? What is this saying? This is saying there's going to be destruction everywhere. You can't escape it. Those of you all that think you all could escape it, you know, you all could go under, go, go by a, a bunker. You could go survive in a bunker. Or you could get weapons and so forth, and you're going to be, be able to defend yourself when all of this chaos and things is happening. And you store up a bunch of food and so forth. Listen, the Lord said, listen, the day of the Lord is darkness. Evil going to be coming from every direction everywhere don't think you're gonna run to the islands and hide you know those of you from the islands don't think you're running over there and, and hide because the bible says the island's gonna disappear man there will be no more jamaica you know no more jamaica that whole island is gonna be covered in water the whole island the all you know all them little islands um, um, St. Croix, St. Crit, St. Martin, Trinidad, Haiti. Tobago, Haiti. Huh? Haiti, Cuba, Anguilla, Dominic. All these islands going to disappear when that destruction take place. You know, let me get that scripture. 12 and 16, Revelation. Yeah. The islands is... I right, read... Yeah, read that for me. Revelation. Because I, I, I shouldn't be saying things and I don't, you know, get, get, read, read the scripture for me. Revelation chapter 6, verse uh, 11. That's not it? No. All right, keep on reading. 
Revelation chapter 6, verse 14. And the heaven departed, and the heaven departed as a scroll. When, it's, when it is rolled together. So that's talking about nuclear bomb. When that bomb dropped, it said the heaven going to roll together as a scroll. Read on. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So you got the islands going to be destroyed, man. Let's understand that the islands going to be destroyed. Okay, jump back to where you was at and read that. Amos chapter 5 verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? So you going you lean your hands, you running from all from from everything. Every place you go is destruction taking place. You know? Everywhere you go going to be destruction taking place. That's why the prophets and them when they saw these things they said, "I don't want to be wrong in that time. I hope I'm not living when them things take place." Imagine you got kids Imagine you got kids, you got young kids, and you've seen all of these things taking place. It's famine taking place, it's war, you know, it's, things is crazy, and you got kids with you too, and you got to take care of them kids. You know, you know how horrible that is? You know, it's food shortage, everybody's starving, people is rubbing and killing each other. You're seeing people getting raped and all of that stuff. Civil unrest is taking place, destruction, and you... And you got like five kids with you and you trying to survive. You know, that's for you sisters that <laughs> you sisters that think you don't need no man. I don't need no man. When that time comes, we're going to see what's going to happen. You know what I mean? You, you know, for real. The scripture says a man going to be um, a pillar and a strength in those days or something like that. They just, yep. But read on. You want to um, continue to Amos or you want to go back to Oh, no. Nah, jump back to where you was at. Luke chapter 1. No, Malachi. Oh, Malachi. Yeah, Malachi. Malachi 4 and 5. So I went there to explain the day of the Lord. Read on. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. So the Lord said you're going to send Elijah the prophet. Read on. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Before the coming of the dreadful day of the Lord. That's the day of destruction, the day of darkness. Read on. Verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Read on. And the hearts of the children to the fathers. And the heart of the children, he said, he going to turn them to their fathers. Now the heart of the fathers is what? What is the heart of the fathers? The heart of the fathers is the Bible. The Bible is the heart of the fathers. So this prophecy is that Elijah is going to turn you back to who your fathers are. He's going to let you know what? Who you are. He's going to let you know that you are the 12 tribes of Israel. He's going to let you know that you got to follow what your forefathers teach, what Isaiah teach, what Jeremiah said, what Moses said. You're going to got to do this. You got to remember what your forefathers said. That's what Elijah came. That's what John the Baptist was doing. Okay, before the destruction come, before the coming of the destruction on this earth, before nuclear World War III pop off on this planet earth, the scripture says what? That Elijah got to come again to prepare the coming of the Lord. You know, now go back to, to Mark 17 is a point I want to bring out there real quick. Remember Matthew what it 17? said that Elijah, no, uh, Matthew 17. Right. Matthew 17. Get that and read it. Remember what they said. They said that Elijah, remember what Christ told the disciples. Read that again. Matthew chapter 17 verse 10. And his disciples asked them saying, why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come. So when he says Elias truly shall first come, he's going into what? Malachi Five and four. Yeah. Four and five. Four and five. Okay, he's going into that. Where before what? Before Christ returned to destroy America, Babylon, and deliver us out of this captivity, guess what? Elijah got a return. You know, read it again one more. 
time. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? So Elias must first come, read on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come. So he said, Elijah must first come, read on. And restore all things. And restore all things, meaning to bring all things to our remembrance. Restore all things, meaning what? To teach us that we are the children of Israel. Because remember, the prophecy is that we will forget who we are. So Elijah came and he taught us who we are. In the time of Christ, he came and he, be, and he, he taught Israel that they got to keep the commandments and they got to repent. You know, he did that before Christ came. And guess what? The reason why we all are here today is that this man came again. And we knew him not. Right. And we did what we, had, what we did what we did to him. Understand that. Elijah, he came, came back again. He didn't come as John the Baptist. His name was not John the Baptist, but he had a different name. He came back again today and he taught this gospel. He prepared the way of the Lord. That's why a lot of you brothers and sisters is waking up today. That's why a lot of you brothers and sisters know that you are Israel. Now, the, now the bishop was taught and I was taught. We was taught that he might be Abba Bibbins. You know, he might be Abba Bibbins. You know, the, the brother that used to teach in the old school. Right. That the Muslims and them beat up and they jump him and he end up dying from them injuries. You know, that's, you know, we, that's what we think. That might, he, he might be. I got to say might because it's still, remember what the scripture says. No man know it. Like you don't know a hunt. You can't say, I can't say a hundred percent. But, but from what he came and he did, it might, it might be Abba Bibbins. You know, he might be Elijah that came back again. And taught who the 12 tribes are. And, and we got to keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. You know, he, he might be that one. Because from him, guess what? From him came what? From him came the, came, um, because when he set up um, from Abba Bibbins, you got, you got Aria, Masha, you got the One West School that was set up. And from the One West School, Come, all of you brothers and sisters here today and all these other Israelite camps that you see set up all over. All of that came from Abba Bibbins. You understand? And that is what going to cover this planet Earth. You know? The teachings that come from him, that's what going to cover this Earth. Them yayas, this and the doctrine is not going to go, ain't doing, ain't going nowhere. Because before Abba Bibbins, there were always people that used to teach that um that he had one two people that they just used to they had little small understanding that we Israel, you know, all right. But what I want to show you all, like when you read about when you when you read about the the apostles and you read about the people that follow after Christ and that that learn from John the Baptist, they were different. They had a different spirit from everybody else. You know, you could differentiate them from anybody else. Okay, because they taught different. When they saw Christ's apostles and them teaching, they said they could tell that. They said, wait, these men didn't went to school. Our institutional learning, how they know the Bible? These men didn't go to college. You know, some people like to clung you. I hear an idiot say, none of you deacons went to college. You know? They're idiot. They're idiots. You know, you know some of you brothers that is very educated and very smart. You too, you so smart that you dumb. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, some of you all are so educated in Esau world that you are so smart that you are stupid, man. You know? Oh, none of you deacons went to college. Okay, so you all don't have a degree. You all cannot articulate it. Yo, listen, man. The scripture says, <laughs> there's a, the apostles and them, one was a fisherman. You know, they was, they was not, the most I say, he going to use the base things of this world to confound the wise. You know, when, when, they, when they dealt with the apostles, they say, isn't these ignorant and unlearned men? That's how carnal people think. But guess what? 
the most I going to use you brothers that was in the bottom of society to take this whole kingdom down. That's right. And that's what Esau don't expect. A lot of time you are thinking that they're going to be the, the elite or the, the bourgeoisies of bourgeoisies, the black bourgeoisies in, in our societies that are going to rise up and, and, and the God going to use them. No. God using the repented drug dealer. God using the repented um, whoremonger. Right. God going to use the repentant hoe. You understand? Some of you sisters used to be home and God going, you repent and you stop doing that. God going to use you. But all of us is not like that though because you read about Paul, Apollos, and very eloquent brothers amongst us too that follow after God. People that was also up there in society. Right. You feel what I'm saying? You know? But these brothers that usually up there, guess what the most I do? He bring them down. Boom! He did, you know, you saw what Paul went through. Paul said, listen, I give it all up. I was a Pharisee. You want to boast? I could boast too. You know, let me do a digress. Matthew you know, 17. You know, I just had to say that because, you know, you got idiots talking that, that, listen, you could put me in front of any scholar and I'm going to destroy them through the spirit of Christ. Right. You know, you could put Deacon Laba, Deacon Iton, you know, right. Deacon Asaph. You know what I mean? Any one of the captains, any one of the officers, you all could put us in front of any scholar and we're going to destroy that scholar. That's right. You know what I mean? To hell with the wisdom of the wise. Our wisdom is this Bible. Right. You know, we're going to use this and destroy them. Right. You know? I don't want to hear that foolishness. Oh, you deacons didn't go to college. And what? You know, we smarter than you're behind. Ha 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 ha. Oh, man. Read that for me. Matthew 17 and 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias first must first come? Read and, on. And so he said, Elias first must come. Read on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come. So Christ said he shall first come, meaning he got to come again. All right. As I said, our opinion, from what we examine the scriptures and so forth, we thinking he might be Abba Bibbins, Elijah, that came. He might be Abba Bibbins. Read on. And restore all things. Read on. Verse 12. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done, un done unto him whatsoever they listed. And that's what they did. They killed him. They cut his head off. Okay? Now from there, I want to jump back to where you was at before. Luke, Luke chapter Luke. 1. Yeah, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 14. Read on. And thou shalt have joy and gladness. And so we understand that John the Baptist, he was Elijah, the prophet. Okay, read on. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Because John the Baptist was what? He was a Nazarite. Nazarite. Read on. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from, from his mother's womb. So from his mother's womb, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. All right? And he, well, it says he shall be great, right? Yes. Because, well, he, because guess what? The angel, the angel know who he was. Listen, this is Elijah coming back. Your son is going to be great because I know who he is. I'm putting Elijah inside your womb, you know? <laughs> because let me tell you something, brothers. You are who you are in the spirit. You understand? You are who you are. God create each one of you, brothers, and he creates you all with, with a special something inside of you. You know, all of us, some, all you brothers and sisters, God create you, and he creates you with a special something inside of you. You know, and when he's ready to activate you, you activate. And that special gift in you, activate. You know, when you read the scripture, they talk about different gifts, whether it's faith, whether it's um, patient, whether it's speaking prophesying, of speaking of tongues, speaking of tongues. All of, every brother got their different gifts. You know what I mean? And some of you all got multiple gifts. Elijah, he had, you know, his, he, you know, he wasn't, the scripture say, yeah, he's the top prophet under Christ. Under Christ, he's the top prophet. You know, you know, for real. So. Read that for me. Verse 16. 
And many of oh, the... Oh, wait, hold on. So my point is, is that I was saying some. I was saying that I was saying concerning you, you brothers and sisters in here. God create you a certain way. You know, some of you all are created to be evil. I just letting you all know. That's kind of hard to say, right? Let me get that scriptures in, in some vessels. Right, right, right. Some of you all are created to be evil. Some of you all are created to be Judases. You're going to turn on your brother. You're going you're gonna to stab your brother in the back. You know, that's some of you. And some of you all are created to be righteous and to be used by God. And that's just what it is. You know? Romans chapter 9, verse 29. Oh, 21, sorry. Ro Romans 9, verse 21. Had not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and one uh, uh, and another unto dishonor? So God makes some people to honor and he makes some people to dishonor. Okay? Some of you all are created for the most high God honor. And some of you all is created for his dishonor. All right. That one I want also. This one here is going into Esau. But I want the one going into. This one is going into Israel. You know. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. But in, but in a great house. But in the great house. The great house is the nation of Israel. Read on. There are are not only vessels of gold and, and of silver. There is not just vessels of gold and of silver. The gold and the silver is you precious brothers and sisters. Read on. But also of wood and of earth. But there is also of wood and earth. Wood and earth is those Judases, those evil brothers and sisters, those murmurers. You brothers and sisters that always get in problem with somebody. And your name always calling. And you can't get right. You know, that's you, brothers and sisters. The earth, the what? But also of wood. And you of are earth. the wood. Read on. And of earth. And you are that earth. Read on. And some to honor and some to dishonor. Some of you all are created to honor and some of you all are created to dishonor. And that's just what it is. In the father house, in, the, in Israel... Some of you are going to be honorable, and some of you are going to be fake and wicked as hell. Some of you are going to rise up amongst us. You are going to cause confusion. You are going to leave. You are going to take, and some of you all inside, they're going to leave behind them. You know what I mean? That's, it's just a re, the same thing happened. Every couple of years, that's what happens. Somebody rises up amongst us, and they start teaching heresies or whatever, and some of you all bug out and leave. We see it happen over and over and over and over. You know, the vessels to dishonor, guess what? You're going to be made manifest when problems arise amongst us. You know, those of you, you earth and you, and you, and you wood. wood. You're not going to stay and fight and endure and endeavor to build a unity amongst your brothers. You're going to leave. And then you're going to be on YouTube talking smack about us. You know, remember I say this. And then you're going to say, okay, that's the vessel to dishonor. That right there, see that brother, see that sister, that's the vessel to dishonor, you know. And a lot of you are going to still think you're all in the truth, but I'm going to touch on that tomorrow. Read that for you me. In verse 21. Yeah, keep on reading. If a man therefore purge himself from these. So, okay, no, I don't want that. Go okay. back to where you was at. Luke chapter 1. Oh. Yeah. Luke chapter 1, verse 16. <laughs> and many of the children of Israel... Shall he turn to the Lord their God? So it says, many of the children of Israel will he turn to the Lord their God. Read on. Verse 17. So, read on. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. And so why does it say that? Because John the Baptist was who? He was Elias. Read on. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the same thing we read in Malachi. He shall turn the... The heart of the fathers to the children. Meaning he's going to teach you who you are. He's going to teach you your nationality. He's going to bring you back to the gods of the, the laws of the heavenly father. Read on. And the disobedient to wisdom of the just. 
and the disobedient to wisdom of the just. The disobedient is them brothers and sisters that's in the midst of adultery, in the midst of fornication, you know, in the midst of, hey, at the, hey, hey, is that brother here today? You know, no? Huh? Evening class? Okay. All right. You know, some of you brothers and sisters, you'll be doing some secret stuff amongst us, man. You know what I mean? Those of y'all, y'all, y'all be amongst us secretly dealing with each other. And we got to find out the wrong way. Meaning, you know what the scripture says? If a man lay down, if a man lay down with a woman and it be found out, we got to find stuff out through the, through the grapevine. You know, because a lot of you men and brothers and sisters is not honorable. You all like each other. You all end up talking to each other. You like each other. You had sex with each other. You ain't going to come and say, yo, leadership, you know, we dealt with each other, we're going to get married. Now you're secretly, you all ain't seen nothing for months. You know what I mean? That's that earth and that, and wood. that wood, man. That's that vessel to dishonor. And when, when, I, when I check you, you're going, to be, you're going to be mad now. Now you're leaving. You know, when I check that brother and that sister, I'm going to see you later on, man. Hurry up and come. I hope you're watching right now. You don't come out and call you. You know, when I check your behind, yo, your behind won't be talking about I'm evil. You know? You know who you are, man. Real. I ain't playing no game. So the scripture said, John the Baptist is going to do what? I read that part again, man. Verse 14. He verse, shall what? Verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Jump down. Verse 17. Yeah. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. Read on. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Read on. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. So, the, and the disobedient to the, to, to the what? To the wisdom of the just. To the wisdom of the just. The just is, is, the just is when you do what's right in this Bible. You know, that's why I went on, you know, that's why I went on that rant a little while. Because you're going to learn to do right. You know, you brothers and sisters that come amongst us, you're going to learn to do right. Because if you don't do right, you got to go. You know, that's just what it is. We ain't care about no numbers. You know, every week at least 10, 5 to 10 of y'all we put out of here. For whatever evil you all be doing. Because you don't want to change. You know, you don't want to change. But the scripture says Elijah going to, Turn you to wisdom, man. Okay? Read on. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So, that's Elijah's job. Eli we was woken up because of the teachings of, of Elijah. Okay? That's why we here. That's why I'm here. And our job is to, peer, is to prepare the coming of Christ. Our job is to make sure that you, brothers and sisters, that you, you're, that you are right for when, when, when he returns. You know what I mean? Christ said, if you love me, feed my, feed my sheep. Christ said, you got to know the state of the flock. He said, feed you with knowledge and understanding. Our job is to make sure that when Christ returns, you brothers and sisters is ready. You know? When Christ returns, you all are ready. That's our job. And we know in this journey, some of you are going to bug out. Some of you are going to leave, fall out, this, that. We understand that. You know, because the scripture tell you about, about many, the scripture tell you that many are called, but few are chosen. We understand that, you know, but that's our job. A lot of you all hate us for doing our job. Read that, keep on reading. Verse 18, and Zacharias said unto the angel, whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man. So Zechariah said, listen, I'm an old man. How am I going to know? Listen, man, my, I got my... I, my thing ain't rising up as yet no more. You know? <laughs> oh, man. I got to use some herbs to get it to rise up, man. man I do it once every two months with my wife. We don't really, you know, like, come on. You know, you all know what time. <laughs> <laughs> he was stricken in years, meaning he was old. You know? And back then, wasn't no such thing as Viagra, you know? But there was some things. There was herbs you could Mandrakes. use. Mandrakes. Natural herbs. Mandrakes. You understand? You know? You know? Anyways, I'm not going to go there. My mind goes 
to some places sometimes. I was about to say something to the brothers. Read that for me. For I am an old man, and my wife's well stricken in years. Read on. Verse 19. And the angel answering and said, said unto him, I am Gabriel. Right, you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm going to go there. <laughs> I'm going to go there because you're dealing with these stuff. Now, if you brothers have problems um, performing, it's herbs you could use. All right? It's herbs you could use to help you with that. You know, so you brothers need help with that. You understand? Holla at me. <laughs> Read on. Verse 19. And the an angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. Verse 20. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. So the angel told Zechariah, he said, listen, you're going to be dumb. You're not going to be able to speak until these things happen. Okay? So Zechariah couldn't speak. He was, he was dumb until the baby came until and so forth. Read on. Because thou believest not my words. Because with... why? You see, when you want a sign, it's because you don't believe. Zechariah didn't believe what the angel said. And just said, man, your behind is, you don't believe what I'm, like, listen. You know, sometimes you be questioning, like, sometimes you don't, be, like, Zechariah had that spirit. He was righteous, but still he like, man, ain't, he, he, how, how I know this going to come to pass, man? You can show me a sign or something. He just said, you know what? Because you running, you ain't going to talk for the next <laughs> nine months. <laughs> you know? The angel said, all right, this is the sign. Boom. Okay, you ain't going to talk. You should have never questioned me. Now you ain't talking for the next nine, ten months, man. Should have never questioned me, man. That's for your weak faith. I'm going to check you right now. So that's what ended up happening, you know. Okay, like sometimes the Bible is just written and it don't, work, it don't go straight in the thing. But you brothers got to imagine what's going on. He questioned the angels. And the angels said, because of your faith, weak faith, you know. But keep on reading. Verse 20. And behold. Thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. Read on. Because, because thou believest not my words. Because you ain't listening to me. You ain't believe me. Read on. Which shall be fulfilled in their season. And they're going to happen in its time. Read on. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. So they say, yo, this dude just saw something because he was like, <laughs> he couldn't talk. You don't understand. So they said, damn, this dude saw a vision. He saw something in the temple. You know, read on. For he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass. Yeah, he was beckoning. He was like, I want you to see this. You know, you were trying to show them, like, listen, I just saw an angel. You know? Yeah, man. Read on. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after the, those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Because what it is, let me tell you something. When a woman can't give birth, that's a reproach. You know what I mean? That's a reproach. When a woman cannot give birth. You know, it's a very, you know, like, like it's a shameful thing. You know? Um, even in that itself, you know, there's things where that sisters could do today. First and foremost, fast and pray to the Most High. But there's also things that sisters could do today that is having problems, giving, have, um, getting pregnant, is stuff that you all could use. You know what I mean? And I know because, trust me, call the deacon. You understand? <laughs> hey, deacon. You know, just a change of your dad. Like I tell you, when I tell you Esau, Esau be doing stuff, hold on, eh? Esau be doing stuff to mess you sisters up. You know what I mean? A lot of you all got hormonal imbalances and stuff like that mm -hmm. by the bad food you eating and so forth. And just that alone could mess with your um, fertility where you cannot get pregnant, man. You know, go look up these things. Go look up these things, man. 
just by changing your diet and eating some food. You got some things you eat that make you fertile, just natural foods and stuff like that that make you fertile. And I know because I gave some, I gave some sisters some advice, and within a couple months, they got pregnant. For years, they wasn't getting pregnant, you know? But so, yo, listen, but first and foremost, go and pray and fast at the most high. Esau got a lot of things set up in this, in this system. Remember they say, let us deal wisely with them. So these, a lot of things are set up to make sure you sisters don't reproduce. Because you all are bringing forth the prophets. You understand? You all are bringing forth the prophets. You know? Yeah. yeah. No, I was about to say, a lot of time it happened to Deacon because they unbelief. A lot of them don't believe like that. Remember right. Hannah with uh, Hannah in the book of Samuel? She got yeah. to get pregnant at first. She kept praying and fasting and praying to the temple, and then she got pregnant. But a lot of people's faith was weak in here as well. Right. It says, it says, don't act in a midst, in a miss. It says, believe in nothing. Otherwise, he said, Lord ain't going to hear you if you act, act in a miss, man. If you're praying and you, in your mind, you're thinking that the Lord is not going to bless you or give it to you, then it ain't going to happen. But then also, the, the scripture also said, faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. Understand this. Sisters, your body is messed up. Your hormone level is messed up. You're eating all type of junk food. You know, you got fry boys, all type of stuff going on inside of you. Guess what? You are not going to get pregnant if you just go and pray to God. God made me get pregnant. And, and you got to change certain things, man. You know, the way you eat. You know, the, 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 the um, implement some food in your diet. You know, and so forth and so on. You know, that's what you got to do. You got to, that's what you got to do. You know? So, let me go back. Go back. Where I'm at. Luke one twenty six. All right. Luke 1 and 26. Read that for Verse me. 26. And in the sixth month, the, an the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a, a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name oh, was... Oh, no, no, no. Jump, jump. So now we're going into Joseph and um, Mary because John was what? John was, and, and John and Christ was cousins. Cousins from Mary and Elizabeth's side, not from Joseph's side. You understand? All right. Keep on reading. You want to continue in verse 26? Um, no, 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 jump. Why were you to jump to? Jump to 56. Verse 56. Verse 56. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to, returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered. So Elizabeth's time came that she, can, that she would be delivered, meaning she was ready to bring forth that baby. Okay? She was ready to bring forth John. Read on. And she brought forth a son. Read on. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to, to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. So the, so the what? The mother what? And, the, and his mother answered and said, Not so. But he shall be called John. He shall be called John. Read on. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. <laughs> and that like, yo, that's a weird name, man. Ain't none of your ain't none of your kindred called no John. John, that's a weird name, man. Yeah, that brother, that's a weird name, Yon. Like, come on. Who named himself Yon? Dang, dang Deacon, you rubbing it oh, in. Oh man, I gotta rub it in like yo, Captain Yon. You know, anyway, the, the greatest man on the Christ took that name so proud, man. You know what I mean? They <laughs> okay, read on. Verse 62. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he, and, and he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, his name is John. And they, and they marveled all. And his mouth was open immediately and his tongue loosed. And he spake and praised God. So his, so his mouth loose was loose as the baby was born. Remember the angel telling him that going to happen. Right. 
So he says, his name is John, because guess what? The angel told Zechariah to call the baby John. Okay, read on. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, what manner of child shall this be? So they say, I wonder what kind of child a child going to grow up to be. Because you know God is dealing with that dude. Okay, I wonder what type of child that child going to grow up to be. Now, I want you to go to Matthew 3 and 1. So we're going over John, the history of John, John the Baptist, you know? Like a lot of time when we read these scriptures, as I tell you, like what I like to do, like I pull things from anything that I see that I could be used today and, you know, and so forth to make examples for you, brothers and sisters, so you could learn from it. You know, read that for me. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So what John was doing, he was teaching, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, that's what he was teaching. He was not teaching his own thing. He was teaching repentance, you know. He was teaching repentance. He was not just dipping people head in water. He was teaching repentance. You know? Now I want you to go to I want you to go to um let a man be born again. That's John three. No, that's oh it's three. John three and three. Get that and read that for me. Because John the Baptist was teaching repentance. Now let me show you all some that Christ said to, um, to this Pharisee. Read on. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 3. To Nicodemus. Read. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Read on. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? You know what? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and except, of the Spirit. Except a man be born by water and by the Spirit. That's what he's going into. You got to be born by water and by the Spirit. What is that going into? The scriptures talk about by washing thyself with... Jesus five, yeah, five. get that. Get that real quick. You know, I'm going to explain to you what water and spirit is. The spirit, let me tell you all something. You got to be born by the water and by the spirit. And let me get um, John 6 and 63. Get them two scriptures. I just get John 6 and 63 for me. John chapter 6. By the washing of water by the wood. That's what I wanted, but go to John 6 and 63 and read that for me real quick. John chapter 6, verse 63. Yeah. Verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you. The they, what? The words that I speak unto you. The words that Christ speak unto us. Read on. They are spirit. Those words are spirit. Do you all understand that? The words in this Bible, it is spirit, man. When you tell a when you tell a chichi man, yo, thou shall not commit adultery. Cut like when you're going over th certain things, and you and you bringing out certain things. You see how some people's spirit be cut, and they want to fight you because the words that is coming forth from your mouth, that's coming from the scriptures, is cutting their spirits. It's spiritual. It changed people. Okay, the words of this Bible, it changed people. It changed people's minds. That's the only thing that could change somebody, man. You know, going to, um, a lot of you all think that um, you could change or get better by going on medication. Medication, they ain't going to change you. You used to be mad and crazy. The medication going to help. It's subdue the demon. But you still a crazy demon in, 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 in the, um, how to say? In the head. Yeah, you're still crazy. And we ain't telling you to stop taking medication. You're going to keep taking the medication. You stay your ass home. 
<laughs> crazy. Some of you are crazy and your demons in. You all don't have no faith for the Lord to heal you. You always depressed all the time. You know, you always thinking about killing somebody. You know, stay your behind home, man. And stay on your meds. You know, because some of you all, somebody's going to come. They're going to be crazy. They take medication and they good. Let me tell me something. No, sorry. They're going to hear the word of the Lord and they're going to heal them. They're not crazy no more. They heal. They're not talking to themselves in the corner. Yo, yo, what are you watching? Over there? <laughs> yo, yo, what's going on? Because why? Because the word of the Lord healed them. But some of you all, you all still, you all, you all from the time you came, you repent and you still talking to yourself. You still on, on, on your medication. Lord, they, God ain't heal you. You feel what I'm saying? You, all, you have no faith. Stay on your medication, man. You understand? That's for some of you all. And that show me those who believe and those that don't. Because I saw somebody that was straight crazy, lunatic. Person came to me crying and I'm like, damn, what can I do? You know what I mean? We brother fast, the brother pray. And God took that away from him, man. When I say crazy, I mean crazy. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You understand? Like chasing people down and... Like some crazy, like, I see dead people. Like that type of crazy. And that was six, seven years ago. And the brother came, he repented, he gave him mind right. And I never saw him talking to himself again. You feel me? But some of you all, the reason why you all are not healed is because of your unbelief. That's why you all will never be healed. You, um, you, are, uh, you got an unbelieving spirit. And you dealing with certain things, God is not going to heal you. You understand? But what I could tell you all, those of you all that got psychological problems, you all could stay home online and watch online. You could do that. You feel what I'm saying? You could do that. And trust me, brothers and sisters, is a reason why I'm saying that. Because everything we does not bring to you all. We deal with things behind the scenes. Everything we don't let you all know. Some of you all might be there right now saying, why deacon is saying that? Why deacon is so mean? He telling them to stay home. Number one is for your all safety. You know? And as I said, a lot of things, multiple times we had to deal with, with brothers that coo for cuckoo for cocoa puffs and sisters that cuckoo for cocoa puffs that, that came off of their medication. You understand? So we ain't playing no games. We learn. We learn everything that happened to us, we learn from it. We learn from it, man. We ain't gonna make we ain't making the same mistake twice. You know? And if you crazy, let us know you crazy, man. Don't come up inside here acting like, you know, acting like like um don't come up in the school acting like you all nothing ain't wrong with you. And you just walk, you know, you see some brothers they just like walking around and you know, you all keep your eyes on these Brothers and sisters that you see, a lot of time you see them in the corner sit down talking to themselves and stuff. Listen, why you want me to do that, man? I don't want to do that to them. I love them. But they got demons on them. You have to kill them. <laughs> Look, you watch. Anytime you see people talking to themselves, yo, watch them people. Okay? Now, let me tell you, I talk to myself. But when I'm talking to myself, I talk to myself in a good way. You know, meaning I be like, you know, like you going over scriptures, you be like, yeah, man, I will use that scripture for that. You know, you know, like you meditating on the scriptures. Communing with yourself. You know, like, 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 yourself, like, like sometimes my wife, I know she be watching me like, is this nigga crazy? You know, I be in the corner. She like, what? She be see me talking to myself and stuff. I be coming up with breakdowns in my mind and revelations. She be like, I know sometimes she be watching me like, I wonder if this dude right in is there. Yeah, but, but I have to explain to her, listen, when you see me talking to myself, is is scriptures and stuff I'm you know what I mean? So you know, you gotta be able to differentiate. <laughs> hey Dick, that's the same hey, thing I'm just talking about in Samuel. When Hannah was praying in the church, yeah. they thought she was bugged out. Yeah. They said you drunk, you crazy or something, because she was mm -hmm. just praying to herself and going over the scriptures. Right, right, right. Hey so, Dick Dick, one more thing. Another reason why they don't need to come in here, because we always speak on the S T D. That spiritually transmitted demon that they pass off and put on other people. You understand? Yeah. Because yep. their minds don't be right. 
some vampire. Vampire. Some of y'all get some vampire spirit. Me no want none of y'all suck me, man. None of y'all gonna suck me dry. You always complaining, complaining, complaining. You got that vampire spiritual demon. You know, some of you brothers, Bishop, always bring this out. Some of you all get married to vampires, yo. You know what I mean? And you get married to a brother or you get married to a sister and that's a, that person sucked the life out of you. You know, where no, you have no spirit to do God work. None, she just drain you. You ain't happy no more. Some of you sisters used to be happy. Hey, shalom, deacon, shalom, captains. You in here doing this, that. No, you marry this dude and he just sucked the life out of you. And you like, you come to class like this. I'm like, yo, what's up with this sister, man? She always used to be happy, man. You know, brother suck the life out of you. Yeah, man. <laughs> Anyways, I be digressing. Let me go back. That's what you was I going over. Um, you was going over being changed. Yeah. Was going over, um, right. I was going over being changed. Being born by the water and by the spirit. The water goes into the word. The spirit going into the same thing. It's going into you changing. All right? You must change. John the Baptist taught change, repentance. Okay? He taught change by, he taught letting go of all them sins that you committed and change. That's what he was teaching. Okay? Repentance. Because some things, there was no repentance for under the law of Moses. But John the Baptist was teaching repentance to Israel. You all get yourself right. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. Stop being evil. You know, that's what John the Baptist came and was preparing that way for the Lord. Read on. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is a spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And that what gives you life. That what heal you. The word of the Lord, it heal you. You suffering from depression. You suffering from low self-esteem. You suffering with an anger spirit. You suffering with the whole spirit. You, whatever you suffering with, God heal you. You know what I mean? You got marital problems. Guess what, sisters? Guess how you're going to be healed from that? Or guess how you're going to be healed if you're going through problems in your marriage with your husband? You're going to be healed by the word of God. You understand? Not white man therapy. <laughs> okay? You all understand me, sisters? You sisters online, I hope you all understand. White man therapy is not going to save your marriage. Bring it out. You all understand that? <laughs> the word of God is what going to save your marriage. Oh, I'm pointing up there. Down there. The word of God is what going to heal you, man. Right. That's what's going to save your marriage. You're going through problems, your husband, and you going through issues. The word of God is going to save your marriage. That's the only thing. Talk to him, Dick. You understand? Ain't no white man therapy. Let's go to white people counseling and sit down and tell them all our problems and let's see. Yo, some of you sisters, you're stupid as hell, man. You all are simple as hell and you don't believe this Bible, man. Right. Because if you believe this Bible, you're going to think that the word of the Lord could do anything. Right. It's nothing impossible. You understand? You're going you're gonna to know that, listen, I'm going through problem with my husband. Guess what? The word, of, the word of God is going to fix it. The word of, Lord of the Lord is going to heal it. You know what I mean? But a lot of you all want to go to the white man because you all don't trust in the Lord. You all don't think that God, you all don't want to do what the Bible says. That's what it really is. You go to white man therapy and tell him all your business. I was molested when I was five years old. That's why I can't connect with my husband because I was molested. And this, and the white man sit down and he listen and he like, yeah, yes, okay. And he taking his notes and he like, damn, this nigga is crazy as hell, man. Like, okay, I'm get him, get him some pills for this. You know what I mean? You think that white man could help you? You think that psychologist? You like, yeah, okay, she bugged out schizophrenia, this, that, that. I'm going to give her some medication for this, some medication. Or oh, you was abused, okay. When you was young, okay. So you deal with anxiety and give you some anxiety pills. You know what I mean? And this is what's going on, you know? This is what's going on, man. So now, instead of he telling you, like, they, the word of the Lord is going to heal you, brothers and sisters, man. You know what I mean? That's what's going to heal you, you know? But some of you all, you all need the white man therapy, though. I ain't lying. 
you unbelievers. Because I'm telling you all, everybody amongst us in IUIC do not believe the Bible. Some of you all, many are called, few are chosen. I tell you, every week is at least five, ten people. We kicking out of the schools in them, man. And every month we get at least a couple hundreds of people that waking up and coming to learn. It's like a revolving door. A revolving door. You understand? That's what it is. Brothers and sisters come. They are tried. They fail. New brothers come in. New sisters come in. And that's what happened. It's like a rotating door, man. You understand? Many are called, few are chosen. You know? Read. Where am I? You want Ephesians 5 26 about the water? Nah. I got to go in. I got to gotta really finish by 2.30. So, you know, I got to keep it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you want to go back to Luke chapter 1? But it's cut my time short, man. Huh? You want to go back to Luke chapter 1, verse uh, 50, 50, 56? Yeah. No, no, no. Go back to, yeah, go back to, go back to where I was speaking about John. John, Matthew 3 and 1. You got to save where we at, man. You got you to gotta keep me, keep me. As a reader, you got to keep me like in, you know, my chain of thought. Because sometimes my chain of thought does stray. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So it says, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Meaning the rulership of God is at hand. Okay, the the Israelites ruling this earth under Christ is at hand. Read on. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. So I want you to go to Isaiah and read that for me. Isaiah, um, is it 40 and 1? Yes, yeah, start out with this one. So get that and read it, Isaiah 40 and 1. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her that her warfare is accomplished. So cry unto Israel that her warfare is accomplished. Our warfare is almost accomplished here in America, in Babylon. Read on. That her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. For so we, we have received double for our sin, man. The things that we did, God punish us double. For what we did. Read on. Verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. The voice of him crying in the wilderness. Read on. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. So this person crying is preparing the way of Christ. He's preparing the way of Christ. John the Baptist came and he prepared the way of Christ. Okay? He prepared up. And I'm going to show you all that later on. Where John the Baptist, I'm going to tell you all something. John the Baptist, anyway, I'm going to go, go into it later on. Read on. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain. And okay, so jump back to where you was at and read that again. Matthew chapter 3 verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So John the Bank Baptist was teaching repentance. You know what I mean? That's why we, that's what we push here in IUIC. And that's what we teach to you, brothers and sisters. Repentance. Repentance. Get your mind right. Get yourself right. You know, get your get yourself right. Okay? That's what that's that's why you see a lot of the times you all want to know what's the secret recipe that IUIC got. That's what we push. You know what I mean? A lot of you all literally know how we deal with you on them levels. Like, yo, you know, you need help with this, building your spread up with that. This is what you do. This is what you do. And we are about changing your mind because we know once your mind change, you could change other people's minds. You know what I mean? And to change somebody's mind, that's repentance. Repentance is being changed in your mind. Let me get that in Romans 12 and 2 and read that real quick. That's what repentance is. You know, that's what John was teaching. John, what John, John the Baptist was teaching the people to change the way how you think. Stop being a nigger. A nig. You know, stop being a nig, man. Read that for me. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. 
And be not conformed to this world. So the Bible says, don't be conformed to this world. A lot of you all are conformed to this world. Guess what, sisters? This world is coming to an end. That's I know right. you all wanted a nice house with the white picket Big fence. fence. And the dog running around in the yard. You know what I mean? And the, the nice kitchen set and everything nice and lovely. All of that is good, sisters. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, we men, we go out and we work and we buy you all those things. You know, you all like them stuff. We, we don't care. We men, I'm telling you, we don't care about that stuff. You know, we do that stuff for you all. You know, you want to have this nice, this and nice, that. It was up to me. I stay in a basement. With That's brothers, right. man. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Some of you might have damn, Deacon, you think... If it's up to me, I stay in a basement with a brother. You know what I mean? With a bunch of life. I just have... You know, I ain't care about all these things. Because I understand that this world is coming to an end. You feel what I'm saying? This world is coming to an end, brothers and sisters. You know, all that stuff you all got. You know, um, ain't nothing wrong with it, as I said. Everybody's not the same. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Most I bless you with these things, it's okay. You know what I mean? But I'm telling you all how we men think. We don't care about the house. You know? That's why you get us mad. We leave you and the damn house. You try to stop us in this truth. That's right. You try to separate us from God. We leave you and the damn house with the dog and everything. You know what I mean? That's just a state of mind. You're not going to be, none of you sisters going to be a hunk. An obstacle, like you ain't gonna be no a prophet of the Lord. You're not gonna be an obstacle to him in this street, man. Right. He gonna leave you the house, the dog. He don't care about that. The house paid off for, like a real man of the Lord. He don't care about that. Yo, you have the house. I'm out. You are you is being evil. You are trying to pull me out of the truth. Listen, I'm out, man. You know. But let me, sh and you know, I say that I know I offend some people, right? I want that in Ezekiel. I know I offend some people, man. But let me show you, like, listen, man. The scripture says, if you are married, you seek to please your wife in this world. So we understand you are married, you got to do these things, you know? But let me tell you, let me show you some, somehow the ones I dealt with Ezekiel. You know what I mean? Let me show you all some. Read that for me. Oh, 24. Let me show you all something, man. As I tell you, we brothers, we don't care about these things. We don't care about the house. We don't care about the, you know, well, not all brothers, but brothers that love the Lord. Right. Brothers that their mind is not of, they understand that they're not of this earth, this world, man. They understand this kingdom and their kingdom. And their whole sole mission is to teach against this kingdom and to get up out of here, man. You know, that's where they mine it. But in this kingdom, we understand that, listen, you need to survive. We need to set things up and so forth. We need to get things done. We need money for all of that. So, listen, we got to survive and we got to work and we got to do these things. But, listen, in the end of the day, all that going to be destroyed. Just understand that. Money is safety and so Because without money, we couldn't even be here in this building and so forth. But understand, all of this going to be destroyed. You know what I mean? It's temporary. So sisters, don't be comfortable, man. You got the nice house? It's all good. But listen, know that that nice house is going to be destroyed. Don't get comfortable in this place. You know, Scripture said, don't be at ease, oh ye daughters of Zion. Stop being at ease. Because a lot of time you all get nice things and you get comfortable and you're like, who is God? Like, who is God? That's why Solomon said, don't make me rich. Feed me with food that is sufficient. He said, give me that is sufficient for me. Don't make me rich, lest I forget thee. And don't make me poor, lest I steal. But give me the things that is sufficient for me. Christ said the same thing. You know, Christ said, food, clothing, shelter, that's the make key things. You know, and everything else is going to be added unto you. The most I bless you with certain things and with nice things, appreciate it. He bless you little by little, appreciate it. Let me tell you, sisters, some um, stop watching that other brothers and sisters and what they have and oppressing your husband. Right. And saying, well, I can't get a house like that. 
<laughs> Why this brother got a house right. and I living in an apartment with rats and roaches. You know, that's what they do, brothers, and they oppress you. Because why? They're watching out what other sisters have. You know, don't understand that this brother and this sister been saving money for 10 years. While you're behind spending all the money on, on Prada and all kind of expensive dumb stuff. Anyways, let me go back. John the Baptist. Oh, you don't want Ezekiel? I got to go into the marriage classes. I still got marriage classes. Oh, yeah, Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter yeah. 24, verse 15. Also, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes. You'll read that again. I take away from thee the what? I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. So the Lord told Ezekiel, he said, listen, man, I'm about to kill your wife with a stroke. And your woman, guess what? I know she is the desire of your eyes. You love her so much. But guess what? I'm going to kill her. You understand? Like the, the scriptures don't go too much into it, but Ezekiel's wife probably was a hindrance to him. And the most I said, listen, man, I got work for you to do, and you lie down in the bed with your woman? Listen, man, yo, yo, what's wrong with this dude? Like, you know, <laughs> most I like, yo, what's wrong with Ezekiel probably all hugged up in the bed with his woman, and it's time to go do the work, Ezekiel all hugged up. Most I like, yo, what's wrong with this dude? Oh, not even that, huh? Yeah, man, Angel like, yo, Ezekiel, where you there? <laughs> To get out of me, why don't with wifey, you know? You know? <laughs> Just I chill with wife. What? Yo, man, I need you to go to Babylon and prophesy against them. What's wrong with you? You understand what I'm saying? Most I say, yo, this dude, I, right, I'm going to kill your woman. I'm going to kill your woman, the apple of your, the desire of your eyes, man. It's either that is one reason he was up on the all the damn time, or she was being a demon to him. You know, so read that again, man. So oh. This is for you, sisters, that is demons to your husband, oppressing your husband. You keep, you know, listen, the more side, some of y'all, he going to deal with you all, man. You sisters like that. Read on. Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. So a stroke. She caught a stroke and she died. Read on. Yet neither shalt thou mourn nor weep. And he said, don't even cry for her, man. You better don't cry. You know what I mean? I ain't want to see one tear run out of your eye. Imagine the Lord telling you, I'm about to kill your wife and you, you better don't cry. I'm going to kill her and don't even cry, man. I know you love her. You better don't cry. Read on. Neither shall thy tears run down. Don't even, I ain't want to see one tear come out of your eye, man. You know, read on. Forbear to cry. Do, what you say, what? Forbear to cry. Forbear to cry, meaning you better hold that thing in. Read on. Make no mourning for the dead. Don't even mourn for her. Don't even have a wake. You know, in the day when somebody dies, you have a wake and you mourn and so forth. A couple of days mourning and so forth. You're going to have a couple of days you mourning and crying and like, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> the most I said, I don't want to see no tears. I don't want you to mourn for her. I'm going to kill her. We not Bind the tire of thine head upon thee. And put on thy shoes upon thy feet. And cover not thy lips. And eat not the bread of men. So I spake unto the people. What the Mosai is telling them here. The Mosai is telling them, put off that weak nature. That's why I said, don't eat the bread of men. He's mm. telling them, put off that weak nature of man. Read on. So I spake unto the people in the morning. So when the, and the Mosai said, listen. So I, so, so I what? Read that again. So I spake unto the people in the morning, and at even my wife died. And at, so listen, you all got to see what happened in here. So in the, the Lord told Ezekiel this, he went out and teach in the morning. He went out and teach. Teach the people knowing that, listen, my wife about to die. You know, so he says, when, and when he come home, we don't. And yeah, at again. even, my wife died. And at evening, his wife died. That's it on that? And I did in the morning as I was commanded. And he did in the morning as he was commanded. Meaning what? He went out and taught his people. And when he came home and he saw she dead, he couldn't even cry. 
Some people are going to say, yo, this dude didn't love his wife. This dude is cold. You know why he didn't try to, he don't love his wife. You know, that's what some people are going to say. Like some of you all online right now saying, damn, is that some, is that dude didn't love his wife. He didn't even cry for her. You know, I, like I know how a lot of you sisters think. But understand this. You are not going to come before the mission of God. That's right. You do that, guess what? A weak brother going to stick up under you and, and get you slapping him around and shit. <laughs> Beep. Yo. So, I try. So y'all so y'all apologize, dick. man. You know, when I get excited, it come out. You understand? I try not to. I be trying to I braille it my tongue. But it still come out sometime. You know? But anyways, let me come off of that. I'm going into some, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back to where we was at, man. I keep... I... Yeah, yes, sir. <sighs> let me take a deep breath and go back into John the Baptist. I'm, I'm, I'm start jumping in and some, some other stuff, man. Read it again for me, man. Romans 12? Or you nah, go all the way back Matthew to Matthew, three? man. <laughs> Okay. I'm 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 going all over the place, man. Uh, y'all got to pull me back. I'm dealing with John the Baptist. Matthew, you know. So my point why I went all there is that John the Baptist taught repentance. Okay, he taught repentance, change. Read on. Matthew three verse one. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, "Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." So John was preaching repentance that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Read on. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of uh, camel's hair and a, a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. So he ate locusts and wild honey. Okay, read on. Verse 5, Then went out to, then went out to him uh, Jerusalem and all Judea, in all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan. So all of them came forth, and they were baptized by him in Jordan. Okay, all Judea came out. Everybody came forth, and they were baptized by John in Jordan. Okay, read on. Confessing their sins. And doing what? Confessing their sins. So it says they were baptized and they were confessing their sin. Meaning they were confessing the things that they was doing wrong. Okay? Read on. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? So now he insulted them. He said, all you snakes, man. All of you all are a whole bunch of snakes. What warned, who warned you to come from the rat? Oh, you know judgment about to come on you all. Who warned you all? Because they was wicked and evil men, the Pharisees and them. They came out. Okay, and they ain't came to repent. They came to, to find fault. Right. You know what I mean? To, 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 you know, that's what they came for. Read on. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. Now, when you repent, you must show forth fruits. Meaning what? You used to steal, you don't steal no more. You used to be a hoe, don't stop whoring. You know what I mean? Whatever you used to do, you don't do it no more. That's how you bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. Go to Jeremiah 32 and 17 and read that. When it says bring forth fruit worthy of re repentance, meaning you got to change. It's all going into change. Repentance, it means change. Read that for me. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold. Thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Thou sewest loving kindness unto thousands. You got Jeremiah, you got Jeremiah 32 and 17? Yes. That's Jeremiah 32 17. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, keep on reading. Verse 18. Thou sowest loving kindness unto thousands, and recompense the iniquity of the fathers, into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name. Great in counsel and mighty in work. For thine eyes are open upon all the ways of, son, of the sons of men. For God's eyes is open upon all the ways of the sons of men. Read on. To give everyone according to his ways. So every man going to be judged according to his ways. 
And according to the fruit of his doing. So the fruits of his doing. The fruits of his doing. Meaning what you do when you are on this earth. God is going to deal with each and every one of us. According to what we did when we was on this planet earth. That's why some of you all lie. You all scheme. You all deal deceitful. You all mislead people. Guess what? These things are... Every, you all got to pay for it. If I deal evil with any one of you brothers and sisters and I don't repent, I got to pay for it. You understand? That's just what it is. The Lord said he going to deal with, he going to deal with every man according to the, the what? According to the fruit of his doings. So the fruit is going into the things you do. You understand? That's what it's going into. The things you do. Some of you sisters, you are still doing certain things, guess what? Christ return, you're going to be rewarded for that. You know, are you still sleeping with that brother? Are you still sleeping with that sister? Are you all still sleeping around and see, for committing fornication and all of that? You know, are you still doing these things? Are you a heretic? Do you got hatred towards your brother? I'm not going to do a class on Leviticus 5 and 1 one of these days. Because everybody be talking about Le Levitic Levitic Leviticus 5 and 1. You see sin, you got to reveal it. So you know what? A lot of people use Leviticus 5 and 1 to gossip, murmur, tail bear. I'm going to do a class on that one of these days, man. Especially for you IUIC rejects. IUIC rejects. I'm going to touch on that too. IUIC rejects. I'm going to break down what is an IUIC reject. I'm going to go over that. I think I'll go over that tomorrow. Raven and Wolves. You don't know. <laughs> you know, what is an IUIC reject? That's a good topic. You understand? Because a lot of you all are rejects. Really rejected by God. You understand? But anyways, where, we, where I'm at? Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. Read on. Uh, verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? You know what? Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meet for repentance. Meaning, do the things that's right, that show that you are ready to repent, to show that you have repented. Do the things that's right. Read on. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. So don't talk about, yo, you come from Abraham you descended from Abraham. Abraham is your father. Read on. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. So God is able to raise up out of these stones children from Abraham. Read on. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down. So if you don't bring forth good fruit, the scripture says you are cut down. Read on. And cast into the fire. And that's what you call a reject. You are rejected. You know what I mean? You don't bring forth fruit, God is going to reject you. You understand? A lot of brothers and sisters that, you know, um, are, are calling them IUIC rejects. A lot of them, they brought forth no fruit. You understand? And when you read fruit, is the fruit of the Spirit is in Galatians. Peace, love, joy, long-suffering, patience. All these things is things you got to bring forth over time. And you be patient with your brother. You be peaceful with your brother. You know, you learn how to keep God's commandment. You, you know, when you read Galatians 9, it gives you the fruits of the Spirit. You ain't bringing forth no fruits, no good fruits. All you're studying is how to get paid or you go there fornicating or whatever it is. So you ain't bringing forth no fruits of the Spirit. So guess what? You're going to be rejected. Excommunicado. Tree cut down. And cast out. You understand? Read on. Verse 11. Indeed, I indeed baptize you with the water unto repentance. So this is what John said. John said, I baptize you with water unto repentance. Meaning, I dip you in water that you might what? You might change. You understand? Now, let me tell you all something about water, water baptism. Let me show you something. It's a difference between Christ's baptism and John's baptism. John's baptism was water. Christ's baptism is the word. You understand? It's two different baptisms. 
So is either you following Christ's baptism, when Christ baptized the people, or you following John baptism. You understand? But remember what we read, that John going to do what? He going to prepare the way for Christ. Okay, read. I indeed baptize you with the water unto repentance. So John said he baptized with water unto repentance. Get, let me get Peter's 3 and 21. First Peter's 3 and 21. First Peter's chapter 3, verse 21. The like figure where unto even baptism doth also now save us. So baptism save you, read on. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. So not by you dipping in water or washing yourself, dipping yourself in water. Not John baptism, read on. But the answer of a good conscience towards God. How do you have a good conscience before God? John said it early on. He said, bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Meaning, do what's right. Repent. That's how you get a good conscience towards God. You understand? Water does not save you, brothers. Dipping your head in water. You got a bunch of brothers leap up out of here. All of them was getting their head dipped in water. They doing backflips in water. And all of them still, they defile. All of them still defile. Type of stuff that coming out of their mouth, the kind of doctrines, all of them still defile. You understand? No, if somebody want to get baptized, you know, it's nothing wrong. You want to get baptized. I'm going to hold you and throw you in some water. You know what I mean? You know, but listen, back John baptism, the scripture says, that got to decrease. And I'm going to touch on that. And if somebody do it because they don't understand, I understand. I ain't, I ain't going to bug out and be like, okay, you evil because you dipping your head in water. Guess what? You probably just don't understand. You know what I mean? You know, we, I understand the type of baptism that today that we got to be baptized with. But read on. The like figure we're unto, baptism also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, read on. But the answer of a good conscience toward God. But you got to have a good conscience towards God. Have a good conscience towards God. There's no way you could be inside here and you lying on a brother. You stealing. You're doing all type of evil. You know what I mean? A lot of you all right now, your conscience is bothering you. You know what the hell you be doing when you not around us. You know your conscience bothering you right now. All I could tell you all is fix it, man, before it's too late. That's all I could tell you all. Every last one of you all. Fix it before it's too late. You know? This baptism is about having... A good conscience towards God. Keep on. Go, jump back and let's finish. Let's finish that up, man. It's some, I got to finish by. I ain't got much time. Keep, jump back. Matthew 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with, the wa with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. So Christ said, listen, I baptize you with water unto repentance. Christ, no me Christ. John the Baptist, he baptized with water unto repentance. The water that he dipped you in was symbolic to purity, to you cleaning yourself. Right. That's what it was symbolic to. That's why I say he baptized you with water unto repentance, meaning you got to bring forth fruit. You got to change. Okay, read on. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize. No, read it. You missed some. Read it again. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Read on. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. But this is what John said. John said, he that cometh after me is mightier than me. Okay? Who is John talking about? Christ. He said, I'm baptizing you with water unto repentance. But the person coming after me, he's mightier than me. Read on. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. I can't even walk in this man's shoes. Okay, John was never teaching his own thing. He was never doing his own thing. He prepared the way for Christ. And I'm going to show you all that. Keep on reading. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So it says that John shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Okay. What is the whole, what, he said Christ going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Okay, the Holy Ghost, when we read Acts 7 and 51, that explain what the Holy Ghost is. 
Okay, and the Holy Ghost is not nothing new. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God that dwell in you. Now, in the time of the apostle, the Spirit of God gave the apostles power to heal. He gave them power to to um to heal. Speak in tongues. To speak in different languages and so forth. You know what I mean? Today, we are not going to fully, like some powers, the Lord is not going to give us them powers today. You know, we have a certain level of the Holy Ghost dwelling in us. We do got the Holy Ghost dwelling in us, but um, the way how we heal somebody is by praying and fasting for them. You know, the scripture said there shall be no sign. The only sign is that we pro you're going to see your dog, we're going to his dreams. You know, he said the son's going to prophesy, going to prophesy and dreams. Them is, the, them is the signs and visions. That's what you, we're going to have today. Like, that's how the most I speak to us today. You're going to have a, you wake up, you're like, damn, I had this dream. And then the dream you had, you realize the same dream come to pass like a year down the line. You're like, damn, you know, or, 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 um, or prophesy, meaning you learning the scriptures and bringing it out. You know, that, or these are the gifts you're going you're gonna to get today. You know, this is what you get from the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost today. Okay, remember what Christ said. Christ said, I will not leave thee comfortless. comfortless. I will come unto thee and I will dwell unto thee. And I will dwell in thee. Okay? I will send you the comforter which is the Holy Spirit. And he will dwell in you and abide in you. That is the Spirit of Christ. Okay, so uh, where we at? We at verse 12. Read on. Whose fan is in his hand. So read it again. Read it again. Verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. So Paul's, um, so John no. said, I baptize you with water unto repentance. Read on. But he that cometh after me. But he that cometh after me. Is mightier than I. He's mightier than, 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 than um, Christ. Read on. No, wait, he's, he's, mightier he's mightier than John. Than John. Right. He's mightier than John. Christ is mightier than John. Read on. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. And Christ, John said he, he, cannot, he cannot even bear Christ's shoes. He can't put himself in Christ's shoes. Read on. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And so with, he going he to do what? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So John going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with fire. And with fire. So what that show you, that show you two different baptisms. It show you, John said, I truly baptize you with water unto repentance. But, understand this. Somebody's coming after me that going to baptize you a different way from how I'm baptizing you. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. No, he, going, he says he's going to baptize you with what? With, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. With Holy Ghost and with fire. The Holy Ghost and with fire is going into the fire is going into them trials and that tribulation and ultimately that total destruction that's coming here on this earth. You understand? That's what it's going into. The fire is going into them trials and you being purged, but it's ultimately going into them nuclear weapon, that bomb, that fire that's going to hit this earth and we're going to be delivered, delivered up out of it. Right. You know? So, I want you to go to... Um, where that scripture at, man? Is it in, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read that for me. Matthew chapter 11, verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they so, that were... So he said, what you went out to see? You, went, you think you went to look to see some weak, brother? You think that's what you went out? You think, you, think, you think John is weak? You think he's soft? What do you think you went out there to see, man? You think you could confuse him? You could mess with his, with his mind? You think he wishy-washy like, you know, some of you brothers wishy-washy. You believe one thing today, you believe something else tomorrow. Read on. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in, the, in king's said, houses. Oh, oh, he said, he said you, think that, you think you went to see somebody dressed nice and he says, what? Read it again. But what went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, 
They that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. So if you wear nice clothes, listen, you in king's houses, man. You know, you a prince, you a king. You understand? You know, John was not like that. You know, John, John was not like that. Read on. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. So John is more than a prophet, man. Understand that he is that messenger that was sent to prepare the way of the Lord. John the Baptist was more than a prophet. He was Elijah. You understand? And that spirit, that person is a different person, man. You know, that's under Christ is him, man. You know, under Christ is him. Christ, John, that's, John said, I, he was preferred before me, meaning Christ was preferred before him. Read on. Verse 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger. So John the Baptist was that messenger. Read on. Before thy face. Which shall prepare thy way before thee. So that's what it means. That's what it's going into. As I said, John the Baptist was not a regular brother, man. He's not just a prophet. He's a messenger from God. Mm. Let me get that in Malachi, in Malachi 3 and 1, man. Let me get that in Malachi. Malachi. And then, hey, where that scripture says, um, hey. The book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall... Read that again. Behold, I will send my messenger. So Christ said, John is a messenger. He said, you ain't come to see a regular man. He says, he says listen, he's the messenger that was sent. Read it again in Malachi. Malachi 3, verse 1. Behold. I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Okay, so the messenger is John the Baptist. The, the messenger is Elijah. The messenger, the messenger might be, I say 99.9, um, Abba Bibbins. You understand? The brother that came in the past and taught. And all these brothers that you see... All these Israelite groups that you see stem, stem off to today, taking this truth all over the world, they stem from, from that brother teaching. Okay? Now, uh, what is that? Hey, let me, um, let me get that scripture that says, lead them alone. You cannot speak much. That scripture I was bringing on. What is it? Mark? Um, it goes... Um, the brothers that was teaching. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, check it. No, this is what I want. I'm going, I'm going to switch topic real quick. There's a lot more I could go into baptism and all of that. There's a lot more I could go into baptism. What Christ said, lead them alone. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, no. Let me show you all something. There's a lot more I could go into baptism, how you cleanse, how you clean up yourself. The baptism of John, when John baptized Christ, but time is running short. And I got to shut it off soon. So I'm going, what I'm going to show you all right now is that the teachings of John. John, disciples, they all followed after Christ. Right. And they all was never doing their own thing. Okay? John, let me say it again. John, the Baptist, his disciples, they all followed Christ when Christ came. Okay? The faithful ones, they all followed Christ because remember what it says that John came to do what? Prepare the, the way for Christ. You know, he came to prepare the people so when Christ come, you know, they are already prepared. You understand? So, so as I said, John the Baptist's disciples, they all followed Christ. They was not doing their own thing. Okay, and I'm going to show you all that. Now, read Mark, that for me. Yeah. Mark chapter 9, verse 38. And John, and John answered him and saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. So John, he saw, this is John that was beloved, but John said he saw somebody casting out 
devils in Christ's name. Read on. And he followeth not us. And they was not. So these, this person that was casting out devils in Christ's name. John said, listen, this person ain't following us. This person is not with us. But they able to do these. They, I see them, they're casting out demons. They have spiritual power. This dude right here got spiritual power. Okay, read on. And we forbid him. And I told that person, stop casting out demons in Christ's name. You ain't rolling with us. You not with us. You don't know, you know, you not with us. So read on. Because he followeth not us. Because he wasn't following after the apostles and them. Read on. But Jesus said, forbid him not. But Jesus said what? Forbid him not. Jesus Christ said, don't forbid this man that you see is casting out demons in my name. In Christ's name, this man was casting out demons, was doing miracles and so forth. Read on. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. Christ said, there is no man that could do miracles. The brother was doing miracles in Christ's name. Christ said, there's no way he could do that and speak evil of me. You all understand? No, my question is this. Who was this person? Who was this person that was casting out demons and doing in, in Christ's name? Who was this person? Who could help me? Because a lot of time we use that scripture today to say, well, other brothers from other camp, they could teach and, you know, and, you know, the scripture said, leave them alone and so forth. But who was this person? Because this person was doing miracles in Christ's name. Who was that person? Who could help me? 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 No? Let me give it to yeah, man. Sure, leadership is um one of John's followers, John the Baptist's followers. That's it right there. That's it right there. But in the spirit, man, that was one of John's disciples. And I'm going to prove that to you all. Remember, I told you all, John's disciples, they all followed Christ. Why? Because John came and prepared the way for Christ. Okay? So when Christ came now, he already had people that was prepared for him. Who were those people? Those people was John disciples. Okay? Now, John disciples became Christ's disciples. Now, go to Romans 18 and 24. Romans 18 and 24. Sixteen? No, I'm in Romans. Acts, Acts 19. 18. Acts 18, 18 and 24. Right. Sorry. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at, born at Alexandria. So this brother was born in Alexandria. This Jew, this brother named Apollos. Read on. An eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures. So this brother was eloquent, meaning he spoke very well. He was very educated. They're going to have brothers amongst us that are going to be very educated. You know, they're going to be very eloquent. Okay, read on. Came to Ephesus. This man was instructed. Wait, read it again. I missed something. I missed something. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures. Read on. Came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. So it says that this man, Apollos, he was what? Instructed in the way of the Lord. He was instructed in the way of the Lord. What does it mean by he was instructed in the way of the Lord? It means that he was taught Christ. Who, who taught him Christ? <laughs> who taught him Christ? John the Baptist taught him Christ. John taught him about Christ. Okay, read on. Read that again. This man, verse 24, and a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. So he was instructed in the way of the Lord. By whom? By John. Read on. And being fervent in the spirit, 
He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. He taught what? And being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. He spoke and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Remember the apostles and them that shut somebody down that was teaching in the name of the Lord. And doing miracles in the name of the Lord. That brother that was doing miracles in the name of Christ, even though he was not with the apostles, he was one of John's disciples. And he was, guess what? He was teaching Christ. Okay? He was teaching Christ. Read on. And being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Read on. Knowing, knowing only the baptism of John. Knowing what? Knowing only the baptism of John. So he only knew the baptism of John, but he was teaching what? The he was teaching Christ. <laughs> he was teaching Christ, but he only knew the baptism of John. The same thing with that brother that was teaching, and, the, and John t forbade him. John said, yo, stop, stop doing miracles in Christ's name. You know? Is that the same? That's the same. That is the same set. Is John disciples? John was teaching. John had people all over the country. John was well known. Everybody knew he was a prophet, and people came and they was learning from him. He had disciples following after him, and those disciples he was teaching them to to follow after Christ. Okay, read verse twenty six, and he began to speak. Boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. So what did they do? They took him, uh, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more. Stop. He says that they explained to him the way of the Lord more. Read on. Perfectly. More perfectly, meaning he already had an understanding of following after Christ. But Aquila and Priscilla, they took him and they taught him even much more than the understanding that he had from John. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. Okay. No. Where we at? That keep was, on reading. I, you want to jump to Acts 19? And, and no, keep on reading. I get more there. Uh, verse. You got more there? No. All right, from there, go to Acts 19. Right. Now, what I'm showing you all is that the disciples that followed John, they followed Christ. Okay? All the disciples that followed John, follow Christ. You know, because John, job was, John, the, John the Baptist's job was to prepare the way for Christ. Oh, verse, verse 28. Acts 18, verse 28. For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. So that's what Apollos was doing. He mightily convinced the Jew. He was, yo, he wasn't playing no joke. He was crazy with it. But he was one of John's disciples. Now, as I tell you, as the, the, as the disciples, as the disciples of Christ went out and started teaching, and as Christ went out and started teaching, he started a lot of John disciples, when they heard Christ, they follow after him. You know, hey, let me get that scripture. There's a scripture that says that, I read it this week in the Bible. It says that um, he went back with John first baptized or something like that. Christ went there. You know? Uh, yeah, let's let find me that scripture. It says where Christ went back to where John first used to baptize. Yeah, by John. Yeah, so um, go to Acts 19 and read that for me. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. All I just need is like, let me try to get this done in five minutes. Read that for me. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them. So, so he found, Paul found certain disciples. Almost done. I need like five more minutes. Almost done. He sung. He found certain disciples. Read on. Verse 2. He said unto them. He, sung, he found certain disciples. What kind of disciples did he find? He found John the Baptist's disciple that was following after Christ. Everybody understand? Read on. He said unto them, 
Have ye received the Holy Ghost? So Since these disciples that was following after Christ, John disciples, he asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost as yet? Read on. Since ye believed. Since you believe and start following after Christ. Read on. And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be an Holy Ghost. So they said, we ain't even heard that there is such thing as a Holy Ghost. Read on. And he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? And he said, unto what then were you baptized? Read on. And they said, unto John's baptism. So these brothers and sisters was, ba these brothers and sisters was baptized unto John baptism. Okay? They were baptized. Baptized unto John baptism, but they was they was also following after Christ. They have a, had an understanding of Christ. Okay, read on. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. So read that again one more time. Then Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. So John verily baptized with the, this is what Paul telling them. He said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance. Read on. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him. That they should believe on him. Read on. Which should come after him. That should come after John. John never did his own thing. John wasn't setting up his own camp. John was preparing the way for Christ. Read that one more time again because I heard a dumb doctrine. Some brothers teach that. Said John was doing his own thing and the disciples was doing his own thing. And we just read here plainly that John, disciples and them, they all follow after Christ. John came to prepare the way for Christ. Read it again for me one more time, man. Eh? Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. Read on. Saying unto the, unto so the when, people. So when John was, was baptizing, he was telling the people what? Read on. That they should believe on him which should come after him. So John was telling the people, listen, you got to believe on the person that's coming after me. You got, you got to believe. He was teaching repentance to them and he was teaching them that they got to believe on the person that's coming after him. And that person was, that was coming after him was Christ. That's why all his disciples had a level of understanding about Christ. Right. All of them, they had a level of understanding and teaching about Christ. That's why he tell you Apollos was in the synagogue teaching Christ. Boldly teaching the coming of the Messiah. Teaching about Christ. You know, that's why that brother was teaching about Christ. And he was casting out demons and right. healing people. And at that time, the apostles didn't fully understand. They're like, wait, how come he able to do miracles just like us? And he's teaching in Christ's name. Who was that person that was a disciple of John? Okay. Now, there's, there's fi fi finish that up and then let me jump to this last scripture. I'll shut it down. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. Read on. Verse 5. When they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord. When they what? When they heard. When they what? When they heard. Did Paul dip their head in water? He says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the what? They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So that's Christ's baptism. Christ's baptism. Hey, let me get that where Paul said, I came not to... to um. I came not to baptize. Yeah, get that and read that for me. He says, when they heard this, they were baptizing, showing you that Christ's baptism is different from John's baptism. John's baptism is dipped in, is being dipped in water. Christ's baptism is being what? I'm going to show you what Christ's baptism is. Read that for me real quick. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize. Paul said, Christ didn't send me to dip people's head in water. That's what Paul said. Paul said, Christ did not send me to dip people's head in water. Read on. But to preach. But to what? But to preach. But to what? But to preach. But to preach because that's how you change. That's what baptized you, the words of God. That's why we just read that. When they heard this, they were baptized by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you understand? Because what Paul did, Paul taught them Christ, and that what changed them. 
Okay, you no, know, let me get that other scripture and close it out, dear. You know, I'm trying to compress my class classes, you know what I mean, to make it, you know. Yeah. John chapter 10, verse 39. Therefore, they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. So they wanted to kill Christ, man. Christ escaped out of their hands. Read on. And, and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at, at first baptized. So they went to where John was first doing the baptism in Jordan. Christ fled and he went there. Read on. And there he abode. And there Christ abode. He stayed there. Read on. And many resorted unto him. And many came unto Christ while Christ was there. Read on. And said, John did no miracle. He said, because John wasn't doing no miracles, man. John had no powers to do no miracles. Okay? Read on. But all things that John spake of this man were true. So you all understand what, Paul, what John was talking what John teaching was about? John teachings was about Christ. John teachings was, a, was about Christ is going to come. Okay, that's all John teaching was about. He was, preparing the, he was preparing the way for Christ. So the people and them in Jordan, they came and they followed him. They all were John disciples. Right. And all of them is following Christ now. Right. And what they said, read it again. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. All things that John said about this man, said about Christ, was true. Because John was teaching and prophesying about Christ. That's why John, the Baptist disciples and them, all of them, that's why um, you had people teaching Christ that the disciples didn't know who they was. Right. And they was doing miracles. That's John disciples. Okay? And John's disciples eventually became Christ's Christ disciples. disciples. Right. They wasn't doing their own thing. Read on. Is there more on that? And many people believed on him there. And all the John disciples, they believed on Christ there. <laughs> That's what it means by many people believe. Yeah, Read was, on. That was it. That's it. Okay? With that, I close it down. You understand? <laughs> with that, I close it down. I hit y'all with that little nugget today. Is in. So, yo, all right, so I did better this week. I finished 240, so let's break the bread. I went 10 minutes over. I did a little better. Okay, so let's break the bread. I can't ask no question, answer no question. I just want to shut it down so brothers could prepare for Deacon Malachi class that are coming up next. No question. You could ask me the question personally, you know what I mean? All right, yo, so read that scripture for me. We break the bread and let's, let's close it down. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For yes. I have received of the Lord that which was delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye in re remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as many as ye, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do so the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily Eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we say amen. Amen. All right, Israel, you all already know. All right. Um, hope you all got some out of that class. You know, uh, we got another marathon. Every Saturday we call it, I think we call it marathon. You know, we got classes back to back. From in the morning, Friday, yo, from Friday to Saturday night is marathon classes, man. You know, yo, listen, yo, I telling you all, man, uh, yo, those of you all that got demons on you all and you all leave up over here, listen, just leave and just, just keep your mouth shut. You know what I mean? You, 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 um, you bitter or whatever, you, you, 
you want to leave, just leave and just be quiet, man. Don't pull up no video talking, no smack. You understand what I'm saying? Because, yo, I saw Deacon Asaph winning last night, and I'm feeling sorry for that dude, man. I'm like, damn. I like that dude should have just kept his mouth shut. If I was him, I would have just kept my mouth shut, man. You know what I mean? Like, yo, just keep your, just take the correction and just be quiet, man. You know? But he go and do another video. Open his mouth. Man, I'm telling you, brothers, man, listen. I hope you are learning from this. Listen, you all want to leave? Just leave and go do you. You know, and you don't go up there and be running your mouth, man. I'm telling you. Talking smack, you're going to be checked. <laughs> you know, anyways, you know, with that, I say shalom, Mosai, and Christ bless. Shut it down.